in this applet we talk about uh, the proof which says basically that if we've got a circle and a, the center here and that if this angle is the same as this angle then this line is going to be the same length as this line and then there's the other thing the other way around where if the lines are the same then the angles are going to be the same but they're really the same idea and, and all it really means is that because it's a circle that's just a copy of this triangle that's been rotated around and so it's, of course because it's the same triangle this line is always going to be the same as this line, the same length as this line, as long as this angle is always the same as this angle. And so what I thought I would do is talk a little bit about how we made this GeoGebra construction and also to do some interesting math. So what I'm going to do is build a, another one of these, but I'm going to build an ellipse and where this length won't always be the same as this length because we're in an ellipse and this, li this length it won't be always the same as this length and this length. So what we're going to do is go over here into the GeoGebra window and the first thing that I do when I'm doing something with geometry is turn off the axes by right clicking on the thing and just turning it off and then the other thing I'm going to do because this applet might end up being on a used in a classroom on an electronic whiteboard we're going to increase the font size to 18 point and yeah, so that's the first two things that I pretty much will always do. So what we're going to do is build an ellipse. So the ellipse tool is in there. I'm going to click on it and there's different types of ellipses and par parabolas and conics but we're going to build an ellipse. So you start off with two points and then a third point like that. So there's an ellipse and after you've built the ellipse you've got to go and click over here so that now we're in select mode and you can move things around. If you don't click that then it thinks you want to build another ellipse. So what we're going to do is relabel these points uh, we're going to make, we're going to call this one O. So you just go down into, you just, you just highlight it, and you type O, and it comes up with a dialog. New name for point A. We're going to type O. We're going to make this one O dashed. So we're going to start typing again. You just press O again, and we'll give it a new name. And this point here, well, we're going to choose. This is the control point, which controls the shape of a ellipse. We could leave it a C, but you know, we want to use C because this point here is labelled C at some stage. So we'll call this one Z because it's down the end of the alphabet and that's out of the way. All right. So, excellent. So what we do is we're going to now put some points on the ellipse. So that's pretty easy. You just click one there. There's point A and point B. And we're going to put some segments in that connect the point O to the point A. So we want an interval between two points. So we do that and that. And then we do that and that. And back over here. And we'll just move the labels around so you can see them. It's a bit busy. Uh, then we want to put an angle in. So we put the angle and we just click there, then there, then there. And it shows you an angle. Oops. Oh, that's me not pressing. You can press escape rather than pressing that clicking button. So, so I'm going to delete that object and we'll just drag this label over here so we can see it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a slider in because we want to be able to slide it along and have the these angles rotate, these triangles rotate. So we'll put the slider in first and we'll call it, we'll make it go from 0 to 1 talk about why that's a good number and we're going to give it steps of we're going to make a hundred steps on it so it's nice and smooth and then cancel escape to get back over to same as clicking that and we're going to you can right click on it and choose object properties which you couldn't see because it was down the bottom but it was there and we're going to make it 200 long and we're going to make the color this green color. We usually we use the same. The things that are this color green are things that you can drag around. Um, and also, the th we do it. We if you're on the electronic whiteboard, sometimes it's hard to grab the the point if it's small. But now it's we we'll make it as big as we can, and we'll press that button was the close button, which you couldn't see because it's outside my thing. So we'll just leave that down there. And now you can see that the value of 
D changes between 0 and 1 as you drag it along here. Now what we're going to do is rotate. What we want to do is have another point that we rotate around. We're going to rate, rotate point A around point O by an angle that's controlled by this slider. So what we do is we write rotate. We start writing rotate. And see it's auto completed it. So I press enter there. And we're going to rotate. If you can't remember the syntax, you just press enter now. And it comes up with a little bit of a help. You can see you've got rotate the object that you want to rotate, the angle you want to rotate it, and the point about which we're rotating it. So we're going to use the rotate function call with three arguments. Otherwise it just assumes it's the origin, which is not what we want in this case. So we are rotating point A, and we're rotating it an angle of 2 pi times D. So now we've got this point A dashed, and it rotates around the point O. That's not rotating around point O, is it? So we can click on that, press F3, uh, highlight it, press F3, and I forgot to put the, I forgot to put point O in at, at the end there. So now it's rotating around the that point O, which is what we want. Now my idea of rotation is that, that is that's negative. So what I'm going to do is click on that again, press F3 again, and I'm going to put a minus sign in there, so that now it's rotating positively around. That's my idea of positive anyway. Right, so then we're going to do the same thing for point B. We're going to say B dashed equals rotate, enter, we're rotating point B, an angle of minus 2 pi D, and we're rotating it around point O. So now, as we slide it, got this, and then we're going to put in the uh, array that goes from O through A, and continues on, so we go to the ray tool, and we're going to go row through A, and we're going to do another one through B, and then we're going to put another point on the intersection of the ray and the ellipse, which is going to be point C, and another point, which will be point D, down there. And then what we're going to do is turn off, oh, we're going to control Z to get rid of that E, Escape, which is the same as clicking that button. We are going to yeah, right click on the ray and turn it off. So it's still there, it's just you can't see it. It's sort of a construction thing. Turn it off. Then we're going to put a segment in, which just will stop. And it's going out to point C. And another one out there. And there we have, there's a lot of going on in there. Oops. Uh, control Z to get rid of that point. Um, but basically you can see that it rotates around. And what we might do is stick another segment in between point A and point, uh, segment. select the segment tool, segment between point A and point B, and another one between B and A dashed and another one between C and C dashed. It's starting to get a bit busy now with all these labels and all that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is turn off the labels. I'll do in... Uh, we're going to... Uh, control Z, Escape, Control E brings up that thing. We'll toe into the points, expand them out. We want to take... Uh, we'll turn off the labels. We'll turn off all the labels just by doing that. Close, and now all the labels have got there. And then we want, this one is an important length, so what we're going to do is we are going to control E, go into the color, we're going to make it red, so it stands out. Oh, it's, oops, that red is the best red. And then the same with that one, we'll make that one red. And then with that one, we're going to make blue.
We might have to swap those around. I can't remember which one was which. Yes. Oh, well, that's, that's good. So these ones are the ones that are the same, and the blue one is different. And the other thing you can do is to make it a bit clearer if you're sitting at the back of a classroom is we're going to make the style, or we're going to select all the points and we're going to make them a bit bigger. We'll make them four points. Uh, that didn't work. Um, do it again. Control E, select all the points, style, size four. Okay, so now the points are a little bit bigger. We might even, because this point sort of gets in the way, we'll just turn off point O dashed. So we'll just turn it off so you can't see it. So now we've pretty much built the thing that we had before, but you can see that, well, we can also put an angle in. We can put another angle in. We'll just to show that the angles are the same. So we'll take that angle there and we'll go there and there and then there. And so now the angles, oops. And just, oops, control Z, delete that one. So that angle is that angle, and that angle is that angle. Oh, wait, let me move it out of the way. So now as you change either of these original two points, so if we were doing this, we'd make these two points green, and we'll leave these ones black, as, because they're the ones that you can't move. So, but that angle is now the same as that angle. That length is the same as that length, and we can choose that. We'll go in to the, we'll press Control E again, and we're going to take these last segments, the red, the coloured ones, and if you press down Shift and click, then you can change them all at the same time. We're going to go into the basic section, show the label, and then we click down there and choose name and value and we might even make them a bit thicker because they're nice important lines you know we'll do that you can make them dashed or whatever it's up to you close that um, it's getting a bit busy it's um, you know you can maybe it would be good just to show the value of those three because then it'll take up less space so we go uh, view. No, no, there's no way you can. We'll just do Control E to get in there. And we'll go down to the segments menu. We'll select. Oops, we don't want to turn it off. We'll select it, and then we'll hold down the Shift key, and we'll go back into the basic section, and we'll just to just show the values, which is the length of it for a segment, and then close. So you can see as you drag it around, rotate it around, that the red lines have got the same length, and but the blue line clearly gets longer because the triangle that goes from down here is not the same triangle as that triangle because these sides are longer. It's got the same angle in it, but these because these lengths are longer than these lengths, then this length is not going to be the same as that length. So that's an interesting sort of a, a counterpoint, you know. It makes your brain hurt a bit to think about all that. Uh, that's basically how, you know, you can drag the labels around. Yeah, that's basically, I think, enough for this video.